Welcome to Acoustic Guitar Episode 19. We're going to be covering claw hammer strum technique. Now, if you've ever heard old-time American folk music, especially if it was performed on a banjo, you've heard claw hammer technique. It's a unique style of uh, strumming. It's mainly a banjo strumming technique, but you know it's often been adopted to be something you'll hear mainly on acoustic guitar. And it uses all down strums with the technique also applying the use of the strum hammer thumb, generally on the sixth and the fifth guitar strings. And the nickname given to the pattern uh, called by performers of this style is the bum diddy strum pattern. Now in this lesson, we're gonna introduce the strum technique and then we're gonna take it further with some wrists that you can use to start applying the claw hammer strum technique in your own guitar playing. So let's get things started here in part one of the lesson by just introducing how to approach doing the claw hammer strum. All right, so here's our first jump into this concept of claw hammer strum technique. There's a few things I wanna discuss before we really get into this exercise that I have in example one. The main idea with claw hammer is it's like, you know, you were back in the 1930s or something and you were working all day, you had the rake in your hand and you're cleaning the yard or you're out in the field and you're operating the plow and your hands kind of locked up into this kind of shape, you know, the, the plow hand or the rake hand shape. So, you know, the thumb is kind of on its own and then you've got index, middle and ring and small fingers that are kind of cupped together like this. Now, those fingers are making the attack on the strings. And then the thumb is making the attack into the bass notes that you have. Now, in the first example, you know, I'm really discussing here the, the basics of this. There's a, a lot of things you want to keep in mind, like, you know, the fact that in claw hammer, there's no up picking. And, uh, you know, also the approach uses just strictly all down strokes. And the thumb is really, you know, focused on giving us those bass tones. But that thumb, you know, it's kind of a wallop into that bass string. It's not like your traditional, you know, picking. And, and really none of this is like traditional folk picking where you're doing, you know, sort of real intricate patterns and stuff. That, that, that's nothing like claw hammer. Claw hammer does not do that in the traditional sense. You know, what we do instead is we, you know, can isolate some melodic tones and we can do some pretty cool things with the technique, but, you know, overall, it's a, a shape of the hand that we're using is a constant. You know, it's like this. If we have to play single note melodies, we're just gonna use the uh, top of the fingernail there to go into certain strings and maybe get certain you know, tones played out that way. Now in example number one that I have in the handout here, we're working on really a, an objective of getting the strum and that's gonna take place with the upper tones of an E major chord. So we've got an E and then a G sharp and then we've got a B open and then an E on top. Right? So that's the upper part of the E chord we're gonna be looking at using for the strike of the chord itself of a harmony. And then for the bass tone, what we're gonna be using is just open E. So just thumb attacking. All right, that's taking the low E string. Now, the idea of the effect of our groove here is we're getting a quarter note and then an eighth into the bass note like that. So we've got one, Two and one, two and one, two and. A lot of times the uh, traditional players call it the bum diddy feel. Bum diddy, bum diddy, bum diddy. And you could practice that first if you want to just cover up on the strings, you know, mute the strings and then just practice it at first that way. You know, get started with it that way and get used to your hand doing the groove. And then once you're starting to feel that this is not too bad, the next thing that I would suggest doing is working through the chord changes that I have in example number one. We're moving from the E there. And then we're moving into an A chord. So we'll have just bar chord A in the open position there. We're gonna maintain E in the bass. And then for half the measure, we're gonna go from A and then into the E again. Then we're gonna head over to another measure of E. 
And then we're going to do a B major chord, bar chord in second position. And then back into the E. So I'll play it nice and easy for you. It goes like this. And you can tell there again, the thumb plays on the and of the beats of two and four. So we're not getting the thumb in there on down beats like we would in a lot of other folk jams or country jams. We're doing it on the ups of two and four. So we've got one, two and, like that. Three, four and. So really pay attention to that too, because that's a huge part of this style. Remember the the old timers, um, you know, way of talking about this or teaching it to you know the guys around the farm, <laughs> just going bum diddy bum diddy bum diddy bum. So that's the introduction to the technique. Work on that. You may need to work on that for a while if this is brand new to you and you're used to maybe doing more intricate stuff or maybe you're used to a lot of up strums or something. This is gonna be really different doing everything like this with down strums. So that's example number one. We're gonna take a short break, come back in a moment with example number two where I wanna start introducing a little bit of claw hammer with melody technique. Hi everybody, Andrew Wasson here from creativeguitarstudio.com. I've been a professional guitarist for over 25 years now and I've been teaching guitar for even longer than that. But today I want to talk to you about your current situation by discussing the study of guitar and the time that you have available to put into it. If you're like most people, you're working a nine to five job and you're working eight hours a day, 40 hours a week, that's 160 hours a month. How much free time does that leave you left over to study guitar? Uh, let's say you can maybe fit in an hour or so, a, around four or five days in a week when you have the free time. And if that is the case, wouldn't you wanna make the most of that one hour of study? Practicing a highly organized, step-by-step, well-structured guitar curriculum. Without a structured plan, it's pretty easy to waste time. You know, a lot of times it happens by just focusing on playing through a bunch of stuff you know, you know, songs you know, riffs you already know, licks that you're familiar with. But practicing stuff you already know will not make you a better guitar player. You need a constant supply of fresh material. You know, if you practice guitar by just playing stuff you already know, before you realize it, time ticks on, time ticks by, and that valuable period of time that you have every day, it gets lost. If left alone, those hours lost every day turn into lost weeks, lost months, and then eventually lost years of wasted time. You'll still be the same guitar player that you were before because you never challenged yourself. I've seen it dozens and dozens of times in my own studio here, but you know, you can change that. In the valuable time that you do have every day, you can start studying a comprehensive guitar course that'll not only educate you, but it'll turn you into a well-skilled musician. So if you want to learn more, sign up for a free account through my website at creativeguitarstudio.com. The general access membership is absolutely free to join. Come in, get your feet wet, and when you're ready, you can go for the paid membership. What you'll discover in there is the most comprehensive guitar curriculum available online. All right, what's happening here in example number two is we're focusing now on some melody, just some simple melody tones that are getting mixed into the whole grand scheme of things. And they're done so by way of the top of the fingernail of index finger on your strum hand. So what's happening there in the case of the chord changes that I have in example two is I'm targeting into the second fret E on the fourth string and I'm doing that first. So I'm getting that in, then I'm doing the strum. Then I'm going into the bass note, back to that targeted tone on fourth string E on the second fret, chord again, then bass tone, 
Then I'm moving up the neck and I'm going to do an inversion of a B major chord targeting on the tone of the 4th string B, I'm uh, sorry, 3rd string 4th fret B. And then the thumb is taking the low 6th uh, fret of the 5th string. Moving down I'm going to do an A next. So the overall I've got this. And then I'm moving back into the E again. Then I'm going to reverse things and move up this time from an A. Same with the inversions here. And then taking it back to the top. So once again, I'm moving in there with the index finger, with the top of the fingernail of the index finger. That's how I'm hitting into that uh, second fret E tone on the first measure. Then I'm moving up and I'm getting the 3rd string 4th fret B and then the 2nd fret A on 3rd string and then moving back into the E again then I'm going to do A and then taking it back to the top so when melody is added into the mix the top of the strum hands index finger is what's getting used to, uh, in the top of the fingernail, I should really say, is, we get, is getting used to hit the specific chord tones that are performed around the strums and bass note uh, hits. So, you know, in example two here, I've got this interior chord tone. And I'm targeting into that as a, you know, as a way of building the melodic passage. And it's a short passage. It's really almost just like I'm grabbing a chord tone. And it's, the exercise itself here is only meant to develop the ability to, uh, you know, sort of technically pinpoint specific notes on desired you know, string sets as a way to sort of promote some basic accuracy for starting to include those single tones. So, you know, spend some good time. You know, this, these are easy chord changes. You know, it's just sort of a one, four, five in the key of E. But what you're really shooting for is targeting the single tones with the top of that index finger's fingernail of the strum hand. And then all the while you're trying to do the bum diddy feel. So, you know, develop it so that you can target into those tones. They don't have to be 100% perfect. You know, this is really old time American folk music here. If, you know, basically, you know, something that garnered around the early 19, you know, 30s or late 1930s. And you know, this time, you know, accuracy, super amazing technique. I mean, there was no Joe Satriani or Steve Vai back then. There was no Eddie Van Halen. You know, they weren't really focused on that. But it, the idea was to target in and at least get the justification of the tone. <laughs> You know, get it at least about that good. work it up you know it's it's a simple exercise but again what we're shooting for here is targeting into the tones making sure everything is as clear as we possibly can get it so anyway that brings us to the end of uh, claw hammer strum technique part one now coming up next we're going to be moving into the members area next and we're going to be starting to look at uh, part number two of the video and in part two what we're going to really be looking at here is changing gears a little bit we're going to go into an alternate tuning we're going to look at drop d tuning basically uh, actually it's called double drop d tuning because we're going to take the sixth string and the uppermost first string and we're going to drop them by a whole step a step it's a very popular tuning you're going to find it in tons of these old classic songs a lot of old american folk music is going to have this tuning and we're going to look at some different kinds of techniques like hammer-ons and pull-off ideas and we're going to even look at a melody riff but to be able to access that you're going to need a membership into the website you got to go to creativeguitarstudio.com you're going to have some options and membership packages you can start with a free membership you'll get access to a lot of material with the free membership you have 30 free uh, uh, quick licks lessons in there they're fantastic but then when you're ready you can opt for a, a paid membership of either basic monthly or you can take the annual membership it's the 
premium membership. That unlocks absolutely everything on the site. And uh, believe me, there's loads of stuff. The courses are really the main thing on the site that you want to dig into. I got the introductory, intermediate, and advanced guitar courses. They're absolutely fantastic for really getting your skills up to a high level. So check that out on the site at creativeguitarstudio.com and uh, hope to see you there soon. The Music Reading Phase 1 ebook has over 30 pages of comprehensive project lessons covering the entire fifth reading position on the guitar. Music reading charts and drills will work to help students memorize the positions of all the fifth position notes, including important sharp and flat tones. Several original and classic pieces of sheet music will help students to gain a solid understanding for this region of the neck. Rhythm studies, duration examples, plus song and location drills along with 19 MP3 audio tracks makes this one of the best music reading courses available. Music Reading Phase 1 is available for instant download in the View Our Products area at creativeguitarstudio.com. Thanks for watching part one of the lesson. Be sure to sign up for a membership at creativeguitarstudio.com to watch part two. In part two, we'll move into playing some more advanced techniques and we'll check out a claw hammer riff. Plus, as a member, you'll also be able to download the handout for this lesson along with many more professional guitar lessons. Thanks for watching and we'll catch up next in the members area.